Welcome back. So in events 2020 tonight, Mama Ida Odinga has a candid chat with Mashirima Kapombe on what the year has been like, the ups and downs of being married to one of the most powerful men in Kenya and her hopes for 2021. Watch. Mama Aida Odinga wears many hats, but that of a mother is more conspicuous when she welcomes us into her home for a cup of tea. What has this year been like? We've lost friends and relatives to COVID, so it has not been a good year. It has been a difficult year. This year you celebrated your birthday, 70th birthday, yes. but you do not look like you're 70. I am. <laughs> How do you manage to stay so young? Is it what you eat? Is it fitness? Your eyes are, cause are deceiving you. <laughs> <laughs> How so? I am 70. Mm -hmm. Of course, now I see my share kawaida. Keep myself busy. And that's what it is. The heart of a wife to one of the most powerful men in Kenya is one that picks at my curiosity. What is life like? With Raila. Life in Kawaida too. Mm -hmm. to, to us, he's a father, he's a husband. He lives here. <laughs> Fish, she tells me, is their favorite food, and Baba's dressing is always top on her priorities. But 47 years of marriage has required much more. It was difficult. Uh, when my husband was in detention for approximately 10 years, life was not easy. I thank God. I'd gone to school and uh, that made me stronger. Raised by a single mother after her father died when she was eight years old, Mama Aida is grateful for education, which she strongly believes every girl needs. It is very important that girls get quality education that can enable them to stand on their own hmm? or to supplement the family. Uh, by standing on their own, because you never know the future. Yeah. You can be widowed, you can be divorced, maybe you're just single. When they have proper education, it helps them to make decisions concerning their lives and the lives of their children. Yeah. Education notwithstanding, marriage has taught her to persevere. Her husband's political decisions have cost her, but she lives with no regrets. At some point you lost your job at Kenya High School. How did that feel? It was not nice. By the time I lost my job at Kenya High School, I was retired in public interest. And that time, it looks like the end had come. But later on, I realized that I could do other things. And since then, I've never looked back. So I loved teaching very much and uh, I loved my girls. I was teaching in a girls school, I was teaching at Kenya High School. I loved my girls and I loved teaching. The fact that I could mold them, mentor them and make them who maybe they are today, uh, uh, it was great. It hasn't been all doom and gloom. She brightens up when I prod her on intimate moments with Ryla. Is he a romantic? Do you feel like he makes up for the 10 years <laughs> there? He does. Uh -huh. he In does. what ways? What does despite, he do? Despite his uh, heavy schedule, despite his busy schedule, he still creates time for the family. Well, does he create time for you? What Me. do you guys do on birthdays, oh, yeah. anniversaries, that's, Valentine's? That, that's my right. <laughs> You see, like my last birthday, my 70th birthday, uh -huh. I didn't know that we were going to have a party. Ah. And uh, they organized these things. He organized with, um, with Winnie, our youngest daughter. Mm -hmm. And the morning I was just told, invite your friends. We are going to have a birthday party for you. Mm -hmm. Wasn't that nice? You felt good? Very good. Wow. <laughs> I had wow. seen them busy, but I didn't know what they were doing. I didn't know they were actually organizing a, a great party for me. A light moment that seamlessly directs the conversation into politics. She tells me about the day her husband came back from America in 2017, just days after the repeat presidential election. That was terrible. Do you know in the car Baba was, he was there with Yuni, our youngest daughter. 
The car that was following immediately was Junior, our son. Had things really happened, I would have lost straight away three members of my family. It was done in a bad way, in a primitive way, and I hope such a thing does not happen to us again or to anybody in this country. We can't behave like that. I was at home, but I could see what was happening. I called the uh, Inspector, Ge Inspector General and I asked him, what is that you're doing? He pretended and told me that he didn't know what was happening. He told me what is going on. I said, L check on the TV and see what your men are doing. Then he said, oh, my men are not, uh, I don't have a TV where I am. Hmm? I knew he was cheating me. I told him you are misbehaving and your people are misbehaving. I'm a citizen of this country and a senior one. And when I see you doing what you're doing, it's not right. Mm -hmm. Call your troops. Was it a miracle from the tear gas to, well, to this moment? Call it a miracle. For the handshake, women always know something is coming. Did you know? You want me to reveal the secret? <laughs> <laughs> you know, At least some secrets are better kept. <laughs> away from the public. But I think it was a good thing. It was a good thing to have that handshake because it changed things in Kenya. It changed things even the way we perceive each other because there was this artificial uh, attitude. There was this artificial thing that people simply did not just hate each other not because they knew them, but just because of their background, where they come from, yeah. which is something that shouldn't really happen. Was it easy to forgive? If somebody kept my husband for in prison for over 10 years, do you think that person would be my friend? But we forgave. We talked about it. We stopped being bitter. We said, you cannot be bitter with this. We forgave. And we gave President Moy. And uh, after that, we are good friends. Hmm? I would even visit, and you would even visit. Mm -hmm. Despite all these things, the Odingas and the Kenyatas have never been enemies. We've been together for a long time, and we've always been friends. When was the last time you? spoke to Margaret or Mamangina? Wow. Not a long time ago. But we can speak. We speak. Uh -huh. Yes. I speak to Mama. I speak to the daughters, mm -hmm. particularly Christine. We are friends. We talk to each other. So, Sometimes we quietly organized, we have tea together. Despite it all, there are losses that, although she let go of, remain vivid. And when it comes to, like, moments when it's been a close call for Baba to become president and for you to become first lady, and somehow it's always too close, but he doesn't get there. It's always disputed. How does that make you feel? In my mind, I know he won those elections. He won those elections. If they're just counting, if it is not manipulated, he won those elections. And that gives me hope. And when, this, when he went to the Supreme Court, 2013, mm. the court did not agree with him. 2017, they agreed with him and called for a repeat election. Mm. What was that moment like for you? I thought it was the, uh, t uh, the moment of reconciliation. I thought it was the moment of victory. But when election was called back and, and uh, we didn't participate, or he did not participate, or our party did not participate in that, it was just the right thing, because there were certain things that had been ch were to be changed, and nothing was changed. For example, if you are going, if you are going the same place, the same thing, mm -hmm. doing the same thing all the time, there was no need. But in my heart, I know you want it. Her expectations for 2021 are many. 
She tells me she supports the BBI. I think it's a good thing. That's the family position. But it is her legacy she chooses to focus her attention on. Way back when I was in, uh, when I was young, I went to a school called Uganda Girls High School. This school is in Homer Bay County. And uh, that's where I did my Form 4. Uh, over the years, I've been visiting the school and I've seen some changes and some development taking place. But um, I decided this time, I've been urged by some of my friends that I better leave some legacy to Gandhi. Last year, uh, in November, I, I visited the school. I just wanted to drop them success card to wish the Form 4 success in the exams. And I was with some friends uh, these are uh, young people, most of them are parliament, young parliamentarians, and they urged me that I should leave a legacy in that school. That is how we decided, I decided that we need to build a library. Later on, we decided that uh, this project cannot just be a library of books, but it should be a center. So it's uh, going to be uh, a library research center and innovation center. Her message for the new year is one that leaves me in deep thought. I always joke and say, my teacher, my mathematics teachers, taught me only two things, addition and multiplication, mm -hmm. but never taught me how to, how to subtract and how to divide friends. So with friends we add, we multiply, we don't subtract, we don't divide. In this life, if you want to create enemies, you can hit them until you cannot handle them.